The false codling moth, commonly known as FCM, is a stone fruit pest unique to Africa, as are some of the species of fruit fly found in Africa. These pests do not occur in most countries to which South Africa exports its fruit. These countries don't want to risk the pests spreading to their countries and don't want any fruit infested with FCM or fruit fly coming to their countries. It is very important that we do everything we can in South Africa to prevent infested fruit from being exported to these countries. If we fail to do this, these export markets may close down and stone fruit farmers will lose a lot of money. Monitoring in the orchard and inspecting fruit in the packhouse for FCM and fruit fly infestation is extremely important to prevent the export of infested fruit. As the person responsible for monitoring and inspection, you have one of the most important jobs on the farm or in the packhouse. If you fail to identify infested fruit, it is likely that infested fruit will be exported. This fruit may then be rejected in the export market and that country can refuse to take further fruit from South Africa. If this happens, stone fruit farms will close down and jobs will be lost. Monitors and inspectors must be smart, have a good attitude, have perfect eyesight, understand the importance of their work and be properly trained to perform their tasks. You must also be certified as a qualified monitor or inspector and should also be tested often. In this module, we will look firstly in detail at FCM and fruit fly, the two pest insects you have to look out for when inspecting export fruit. You need to know what they look like, what their life cycles are, and what you are likely to see when looking for them. After that, we will look at the right way to monitor orchards and to do packhouse inspections. We will also look at other pests you may find during inspections and that you might confuse with FCM and fruit fly. The false codling moth has four major life stages, which are the egg, the larva, the pupa, and the adult, or moth. The moth is only active at night and lays eggs on the fruit after mating. The egg, which is small and difficult to see, hatches and produces a tiny larva that is just over one millimeter long. The larva enters the skin of the fruit and starts feeding on the pulp. Once inside the fruit, the larva grows through five larval stages. When mature, the larva exits the fruit and goes into the soil, where it turns into a pupa. The pupa develops in the soil until a moth comes out of the pupa, restarting the life cycle. Depending on season and temperature, the life cycle from egg to adult can take between 32 days and two months in summer and up to four months in winter. You need to be able to identify adult FCM insects because you need to count them in traps. Note the coloring and markings of the insect in these pictures. Like FCM, fruit fly also has four major life stages, namely the egg, larva, pupa, and adult fly. The adult female fruit fly pierces the skin of the fruit with her ovipositor and lays eggs in small pockets just under the skin. Once the larvae hatch, they bore deeper into the fruit and feed on pulp. When the larvae are mature, they leave the fruit and turn into pupae in the soil. Adult flies emerge from the pupae to continue the life cycle. The fruit fly life cycle takes between three weeks and three months depending on the weather, being the shortest in midsummer. You must also be able to identify adult fruit flies because you have to count them in traps. Different species can be found in areas where stone fruit is produced. In these photos, you can see some examples of these species and what they look like in detail. It is not so important for you to distinguish between the species of fruit fly 
but it is very important to distinguish between fruit flies and other insects that may be in the trap. Monitoring and inspecting for FCM and fruit fly infestation on the farm and in the packhouse involves three tasks. The first is orchard monitoring, involving checking and recording the level of FCM and fruit fly infestation in orchards by using traps and inspecting fruit. The second task is packhouse delivery inspections, where a sample is taken of fruit from each orchard as they arrive at the packhouse, and the fruit sample is checked for FCM and fruit fly infestation. The third task is online grading and sorting, involving checking fruit on the packing line for infestation symptoms and removing such fruit. Orchard monitoring involves hanging traps with lures for FCM and fruit fly, recording how many FCM moths and fruit flies are caught in traps, selecting data trees for fruit inspection, inspecting and dissecting fruit from data trees and fallen fruit underneath them, recording how many fruit are infested with FCM and fruit fly, and reporting this to farm management. Trap monitoring for FCM starts with petal drop and continues until harvest of the last cultivar. However, in orchards with a history of FCM infestation, trapping starts from bud swell and carries on until leaf drop. For fruit fly, trap monitoring starts with petal drop and continues until leaf drop of the last cultivar. FCM and fruit fly traps must also be placed in areas in and around orchards where there are other trees also likely to attract FCM and fruit fly, including home gardens, riverbeds, and other fruit orchards like citrus orchards. These traps must be monitored throughout the year. Trap readings are done weekly on the same day of the week. If you cannot do readings on the designated day in a particular week, do your monitoring as soon as possible afterwards. There are three fruit inspections at six weeks, four weeks, and finally within 10 days before the planned start of the harvest. In preparation for orchard monitoring, divide orchards into blocks of about 2 hectares. Trap monitoring and fruit inspections are done in these blocks. Mark and number the blocks on a map of the farm. If it is not possible to divide orchards into perfect 2 hectare blocks, Look at the guideline booklet for examples of different scenarios and guidance on what to do in smaller and larger blocks. Traps are baited with FCM and fruit fly lures. There are two types of traps, namely delta traps with sticky pads on which insects get stuck and bucket traps with poison to kill insects. Either delta traps or bucket traps can be used for fruit fly while only delta traps are used for FCM. Separate traps, loaded with different lures, are used for fruit fly and FCM. The farm manager will advise you on which traps and lures to use for each type of insect. You will also find more information in the guideline booklet. Place one FCM trap and one fruit fly trap in every two hectare block in the centre of the block if the block is on flat land. In a sloping orchard, place traps two-fifths from the top of the block. Label the trap with a block and trap number and mark the tree and row in which traps are placed so you can easily find traps again. Once you have placed the traps, don't move them again. They must remain in the same place in the orchard for as long as you are monitoring. Place FCM traps at a height of 1,8 meters and fruit fly traps at 1,5 meters. While wearing latex gloves, load traps with lures and insecticides as per the farm manager's instructions. You must always wear latex gloves while loading traps to protect yourself and to avoid contamination of traps. 
Smear the wires of bucket traps with grease or petroleum jelly to prevent ants from getting into the traps and carrying fruit flies from the traps. Branches and leaves should not touch traps and entrances to traps should be clear. Remember to place traps in other fruit orchards, home gardens and riverbeds that are close to your target orchards. Take all trap readings every week on the same day and service traps as required for proper maintenance. To take trap readings, take along your clipboard with recording sheet and pen. Instead of pen and paper, an electronic capturing device can also be used to record monitoring results. If you need to service traps, also take along sticky pads, lures and insecticide, as well as latex gloves. To take readings in delta traps, remove the sticky pad and count the false coddling moths or fruit flies on the pad. Make sure you only count the target insects and no others that might be in the trap. In these examples, you can see the difference between our target insects and others. After counting the insects, remove them from the sticky pad and stir the pad to remove dust. Record the numbers of FCM or fruit flies you found in the trap. To take readings from bucket traps, count the fruit flies in the trap, making sure you are not counting other insects. Remember that bucket traps are used only for fruit flies, not FCM. Once you have finished counting, empty the trap and discard all the dead insects. Record the number of fruit flies in the trap. Servicing traps involves replacing lures, insecticide in bucket traps, and sticky pads in delta traps. How often you do this depends on the lures and insecticide you use. Look on the product labels and ask your manager for advice. Sticky pads in delta traps must be replaced when they are dirty with insects and dust, or no longer sticky. Fruit inspections are conducted to get an idea of the level of fruit fly and FCM infestation in an orchard. You will do three fruit inspections at six weeks, four weeks, and within 10 days before picking starts. Use the same data trees for each of the three fruit inspections. Select and mark 25 trees in each two hectare block. The trees should be evenly distributed throughout the block. For example, if the block is square, select five rows evenly spaced throughout the block and select five evenly spaced trees in each row. Mark the trees clearly with tape and mark the rows so that you can easily find the data trees again. For fruit inspections, you need a clipboard with recording sheet and pen or an electronic device, crates, boxes or bags for collecting fruit, a magnifying glass or head loop with at least 2,5 magnification, and a sharp knife. Also carry specimen jars with a 70% alcohol solution in case you have to collect specimens for laboratory identification. Collect all the fallen fruit from under the data tree in a crate. Then, Randomly choose 10 fruit on the data tree and inspect them for FCM or fruit fly damage symptoms. Most probably, sting marks or signs of larval penetration. If you see damage on a fruit, pick that fruit from the tree and put it aside. Separate from the fallen fruit that you have collected. Take the fallen fruit you collected one by one and look for sting marks and blemishes. Cut a thin slice at the spot where you see the sting mark or blemish. Inspect it for FCM X or larvae, fruit fly X or larvae, and other signs of larval infestation, using your magnifying glass or head loop to take a closer look. Keep cutting thin slices, inspecting the fruit after every slice. Keep slicing the fruit this way until you don't see any further damage. After inspecting the fallen fruit, look at the damaged fruit that you picked from the tree and cut 
and inspect them in the same way. For each data tree, record the number of fruit infested or damaged by FCM and by fruit fly. Keep separate records for fallen fruit and fruit from the tree. A fruit is recorded as infested with FCM if you find live or dead larvae or eggs in or on the fruit. The following can also be signs of FCM larval infestation. Larval tunneling, fress, head capsules. A fruit is recorded as infested with fruit fly if you find live or dead fruit fly larvae or fruit fly eggs in or on the fruit. It is important that you identify FCM and fruit fly infestation accurately and that you don't confuse it with other insect infestation. Other insect larvae you may see in fruit and mistake for FCM or fruit fly larvae are vinegar fly and other fly larvae. Beetle larvae. Oriental fruit moth larvae. Pear leaf roller larvae and codling moth larvae. Before we look at these larvae, you need to know exactly what FCM and fruit fly larvae look like. The young FCM larva is white with a black head capsule and is just over one millimeter long. As they get older, larvae darken, first turning off white and finally pink. The mature larva is 15 to 20 millimeters long. Young fruit fly larvae are see-through with pale mouth hooks. The older larvae are creamy white with black mouth hooks that stick out, at which point they are at least 5 mm long. Fruit fly larvae don't have a hard head capsule and their bodies narrow to a point at the mouth part and it is flattened at the tail. If larvae are dark, they are dead. Vinegar fly larvae look similar to especially young fruit fly larvae. The main differences are that vinegar fly larvae don't have the flat stump rear end and that they tend to be a bit smaller at 2.5 to 4.5 mm long. Sap beetles have a dark, hard head capsule like FCM, but they have a speckled body, forked tail, and are not pink. Oriental fruit moth larvae look almost exactly like FCM larvae, and it is impossible to distinguish between them with a naked eye. Pear leaf roller and codling moth larvae can also be mistaken for FCM, but they are not often found on stone fruit. To be sure, the larvae need to be examined under a microscope. Collect and preserve all the moth larvae you find in specimen jars with 70% alcohol solution. Mark the jars with a location, which must include farm name, orchard and block number. Also indicate the fruit type, cultivar, collection date and contact details. This must be sent to the laboratory for identification. Look at your guideline booklet for detailed procedures. If you are unsure about any other larvae, Collect, preserve, and send them for identification in the same way. Record monitoring findings in a standard format where you can capture all relevant information, which must include the following. Details of the person responsible for monitoring, the date of monitoring, and details of the orchard being monitored. Two types of forms are used, one for trap monitoring data and one for fruit inspection data. On the trap monitoring data sheet, record the number of FCM or fruit flies you find in traps. The fruit inspection data sheet is for recording the number of fruit infested with FCM or fruit fly, meaning all the fruit with live larvae, dead larvae, eggs, and signs of infestation. Once data has been collected, 
report infestation levels in orchards to the farm manager, providing him with completed recording forms. After harvesting, fruit is delivered in bins or picking trays to the packhouse. For fruit to be approved for export to Europe, a sample of the fruit from each orchard has to be thoroughly inspected for FCM and fruit fly infestation. You will need a clipboard with recording sheet and pen or an electronic device, a crate, a magnifying glass or head loop, and sharp knife. Also keep on hand specimen jars with a 70% alcohol solution in case you have to collect larvae for laboratory identification. Upon arrival at the packhouse, you have to inspect 600 fruit from the first delivery in a calendar week, that is, Monday to Sunday, from each orchard. This means that a fruit sample is taken from all the bins or picking trays received on the first day of the week on which fruit is delivered from an orchard. The fruit sample must be taken as evenly as possible from all the bins or picking trays from the orchard. For example, if six bins of fruit are delivered, choose 100 fruit from each of the six bins. Select fruit from across each bin or picking tray, and not just from one spot in it. And choose fruit at random, and not just better looking or more damaged fruit. Collect the fruit in a separate crate or bin, and record the details of the orchard and the date of sampling on your recording form. If the harvest period of an orchard runs into the next calendar week, in other words, if fruit is still harvested after Sunday, another sample must be taken from the first delivery of the next week, in the same way as the first sample. Carefully inspect the entire surface of every fruit in the sample by turning the fruit in your hand and looking at it from all angles looking for marks or blemishes indicating that fruit might be infested. You may need to use your magnifying glass or head loop. It is helpful to have charts in the inspection area with fruit fly and FCM infestation symptoms so that you are reminded of what to look for. Set aside all fruit you think may be infested. If you are not sure that the marks or blemishes are signs of infestation, still set the fruit aside. It is better to dissect a whole lot of clean fruit rather than to let through even one infested fruit. Aim to do external inspections well so that you maintain a high standard of finding infested fruit. After inspecting the fruit sample, take another look at the fruit you set aside to make sure you have correctly identified the fruit as being infested. Take each fruit that you set aside and cut a thin slice at the spot where it might be infested. Inspect it for FCM larvae, fruit fly eggs or larvae, and other signs of larval infestation. Keep cutting thin slices, inspecting the fruit after every slice. Keep slicing the fruit this way until you don't see any further damage. Signs of FCM larval infestation are larval tunneling, fress, and head capsules. However, only record a fruit as infested with FCM if you find a live larva in the fruit. The signs are merely helpful to show you where to look for larvae. For fruit fly, Record infestation if you find live fruit fly larvae or fruit fly eggs. As discussed before, you may find larvae of vinegar or other fly, beetles, oriental fruit moth, pear leaf roller and codling moth in the fruit. And you may mistake these for fruit fly or FCM larvae. Please review the previous sections where we looked at differences between the species and consult identification charts. Remember to collect the moth larvae you find and send them for laboratory identification. 
Record findings of your inspections in a standard format that contains all essential information, similar to the form used for orchard inspections. Record FCM infestation only if you find a live FCM larva. And separately record fruit fly infestation if you find live fruit fly larvae or fruit fly eggs. Report your findings to the packhouse manager, providing him with the completed forms. The purpose of a packhouse is to sort, grade, treat and pack fruit for export. Graders are responsible for finding and removing all fruit with unacceptable marks or blemishes, including pest or disease damage. This includes fruit infested with FCM or fruit fly. The sorting and grading table in the packing line should be accessible and well lit so that a grader can inspect all the fruit and identify and remove blemished fruit and fruit that might be infested. There should be charts up at grading stations showing the most prominent external infestation symptoms. A fruit grader has to quickly and accurately inspect every fruit as it passes you on the grading table. If you notice any signs of infestation, pick up the fruit and inspect it closely. If you find even the smallest mark that might indicate infestation, remove and discard the fruit. No such fruit may be packed for export. The monitor, inspector or grader can sink or save the farm, depending on whether he or she does their work badly or well. As a monitor or inspector, you must do everything you can to find all fruit infested with FCM and fruit fly. By identifying and removing infested fruit, you help lower the risk of infested fruit being exported, which is very important to the success of the South African stone fruit industry.